how we doing, listeners and viewers. Um, thank you for tuning in to the Hoop Dreams Magazine, Bridging the Gap podcast. Today we got a special guest, one in New England's own, um, born and raised, former ESPN Top 100 recruit, now doing big things in the collegiate level, Jared Terrell. What's going on, everybody? How y'all doing? Uh, first and foremost, let's give a background on how you got into basketball and who your influences <clears throat> were coming up in Boston and also who would you look up to? Uh, well, just growing up, my father put the basketball in my crib. Um, the dad was born, and then I just took it from there. Uh, at the age of six, I was playing BNBL, 13 and under leagues. Uh, my, co- my father coaching, and then just from there, it just went off. Okay. Uh, who are your major influences in terms of who you looked up to um, as a ball player and inspired to not not to be like, but who pushed you and said, oh, okay, I want to be I want to be like him and be at the position that he's at, or even better? Uh, it started off with my brother, actually. Uh, just the competitive nature that we have. I always wanted to be better than him because he was always bigger, stronger, smarter than me. So just trying to beat him. Like every step I went was kind of my goal. And then as I got older, I started watching more basketball. Um, obviously, Michael Jordan, my father, but like my father loved Michael Jordan, had endless tapes and recordings of all of the movies, all of the games he played, just all of that type of stuff. So I was always, always watching Michael. And then um, as I got older, obviously LeBron became kind of my role model. Okay. <clears throat> Talk about a little bit in terms of you know, the different levels of basketball you've played in. Um, you've mentioned BNBL already. Mm-hmm. Um, obviously, you've played on <clears throat> the prep level, uh, the AAU level, and the collegiate level. Mm-hmm. Now, tell me the degrees of separation in terms of uh, toughness and preparation for each level. Uh, the preparation is just is completely different when, when you're in... Uh, playing EYBL uh, some teams have scoring put some teams don't but just like just not even planning to go out just knowing who the players are and just going on the court and just doing it you can't do that in college like it's a completely different level even in prep school uh, it's a lot more scouting than compared to AAU but then when you get to college it's just a whole different element like every, everything is taken times a hundred like you watch a whole lot more film practicing a whole lot more a lot of weight training, conditioning, you got to take care of your body, make sure you're eating right. Just all of the little things just add up, and that's what separates it. Okay. Um, being in New England, uh, it's known for having one of the top prep school leagues in the country. All right. Um, day in, day out, uh, you have to compete with another Division One athlete, whether it's on your team, during practice, or just as an uh, opponent from the opposing team mm-hmm. um, during the game. With that, with that being said, uh, coming from a school like Brewster Academy, uh, who plays a competitive schedule, uh, during your prep career, could you list who the toughest competitor you've ever had to go up against? Toughest competitor? It's a lot. Just on my team alone, I think. Devontae, uh, Ron Patterson, uh, Donovan Mitchell, uh, Chris. And by Devontae, you mean Devontae Graham over at Kansas? Yeah. Okay. Devontae. Um, Kyle Washington was over at Cincinnati now. Um, I could I could go on about the competitors and just on my team alone, but people I've played against. Um, Wayne, Nerlens, uh, Georges, just like that Tilton team. Um, I don't think I got a chance to play against Jalen. Nah, not not well in high school, but yeah, just to name a few. Now at the at the collegiate level, um, how was that feeling? First game, freshman. University of Rhode Island, 
explain that feeling of walking onto the court. What's going through your mind and as soon as that ball goes up? No. Uh, it's just adrenaline rush, anxious, uh, a little bit nervous. I really don't remember my first game. I remember it, but like I don't remember all the emotions I was feeling. It was a lot, but I was just anxious to play. I'm um, excited, a little bit nervous, but just seeing the crowd, just looking up, and just like, oh, wow, just taking it all in for a moment. Uh, it was pretty cool, but I don't really remember all the emotions. Do you remember the first basket you ever scored? Nope. <laughs> <laughs> nah, I don't. Um, seeing last year that you know, URI made it to the NCAA tournament, mm -hmm. um, explain that feeling in making it to the big dance. Um, because it, it was your third year at URI. Fell short the first two years. Mm -hmm. um, describe the feeling of when you're watching you know, Selection Sunday and then you just watch URI go across the board. Um, how was the reaction in the room? Now, we, was, we was actually at the airport uh, in Pittsburgh because we had just got done playing in the, uh, the championship game for the uh, A-10 tournament. And we was in the airport waiting for our flight. And we had watched it on like this little bar stand in the airport. And uh, we were just all sitting around just waiting for our name to go across. Once we seen who we was playing, we started going crazy. Everybody was screaming, yelling. Just, just all happy and whatnot. Um, but when we seen we were playing Creighton, uh, <laughs> Coach Hurley's eyes kind of lit up. Okay. Um, now, how is it playing for, you know, you've played for some tough coaches, you can say. Who's the toughest coach that you've ever had to play for? <laughs> uh, coach Hurley by far. Uh, explain how it is for how, explain how it is for an incoming recruit who uh, I don't scare nobody. <laughs> who's an ESPN top one hundred player. It and doesn't matter. You come in uh, with sort of like a bullseye on your back because you have all this notoriety. Now, how did Coach Hurley humble you? I, well, I didn't look at it like that. Uh, I looked at it. I was coming in as a freshman, and I had to work my way up. But uh, I don't think he had to put me in my place. I don't think he had to humble me at all. Uh, I just came in. I just tried to work as hard as I could, just do, just do what I do what I was supposed to do, and do what I'm able to do. Just play basketball at a pretty high level. Uh, I think he just tries to push you as much as he can, test you a lot, uh, just to get the most out of you. Because he knows what we're capable of before we know what we're capable of. And I think just he knows how to get every little drop of energy and commitment and whatever it, whatever it is out of you. Okay. Um, coming from the NEPSAC, do you at all keep up with um, some of the kids from back home? And if you do, uh, who do you have your eyes on? Um... It'd probably just be the kids from Expressions, but like when I when it was early in my college career, when I first got to college, there was a couple of people that I like I played with and against growing up that was still in high school, so I watched them as well. But just mainly the Expression kids. Okay. Um, on the Nike EYBL circuit, it's a pretty tough circuit. Mm -hmm. um, you had the privilege of playing in it for. Um, two years, I believe. No, I only oh, played a year. One year. Yeah, okay. one year. Um, in that one year, um, and that was the first initial introductory year for the Expressions AAU mm -hmm. program. Yep. Um, now, you're, you're still pretty young, so I don't want to call you um, an OG, an, an old head, no. but I do feel as though um, Maybe to the expression program. Yeah. yeah. I do feel as though you did lay the groundwork in the blueprint in order to keep that going. You got a part. Can we agree? Yeah, I agree with okay. that. Okay. So, in that competitive nature, um, playing on that circuit, um, who did you find as a competitor 
on that circuit that made you say, you know what? I can't wait till I see him again on the court and I have another chance at getting at him. Well, my first game, no, not the first game. The first weekend at EYB was in Cali. We played against the Oakland Soldiers. I'm just Stanley Johnson, just how aggressive he played. He was like 6'7", six, 6'8", six, 240, had to be 240. And me, I'm only on, I'm stretching to be 6'3", <laughs> 220 pounds. So just the height difference, like just that compared, like just that, that moment right there, just how hard he played, how aggressive he stayed all game, just made me realize like, wow, I gotta like, I gotta do this all the time. Like there's no plays off, there's no, there's no moments off in that league without that time for me. Um, but another guy I'd say, um, just the whole Houston Hoops team. They had, they had De'Aaron Fox at point guard, mm. Justice Winslow at the two, Kelly Oubre at the three, and Justin Jackson at the four. And they had one of the big men, I think that he's at Oklahoma now at the five. So the, like the level of competition, it was just every single game. Like you just couldn't take a break. <laughs> so in terms of goals that you set for yourself, um, did you know always that you wanted to play at the Division One level? And if you did, um, what's some of the work that you put in that you could give as that you could give advice to some of the younger players? Um, I always had a vision of playing at the Division One level. Uh, not necessarily a certain school, but I always had that desire just to play at the highest level. But um. Just from my, like the freshman, my freshman year of high school, like that spring, um, until now, I've been grinding my butt off, uh, <laughs> just trying to, trying to, just trying to get better every day. Um, just making trips into Boston, taking the bus, the train, uh, taxis, just coming in and out of Boston nonstop, uh, all days of the week, just working on my game, working on my craft, trying to become the best player I could be. Um, that was like where I separated myself, I think. Okay. Um, you played with also uh, some great teammates. You are right uh, on the AAU circuit mm -hmm. and on the prep level. Right. Um, who's that one teammate that you knew every time you walked into practice that you had to be on your A game? because you didn't want them to outdo you. Ron Patterson. I think that's the person. Because I was like, because he was an older guy. He was a, he had committed to IU. He was ready to go, and then he ended up coming to Brewster. So he was an older guy. I was coming in. It's my first year at Brewster. I just got a little used to the, the prep level, but he made me realize I got to work a little harder. He was tough to guard. He was a tough person to guard, and he was a good defender as well. Long arms, athletic, so it made me work. <clears throat> now, um, pretty heralded recruit. Um, almost every conference in the country uh, you had an offer from um, when you were at the prep level. Could you explain how it felt to receive that first? Division one offer. And can you remember that moment when you received that first division one offer? You don't have to you don't have to say who it who it was from. I don't remember who it was. <laughs> but could you remember the feeling when you got when you heard you've been offered by such and such school and that was your first division one offer? Can you remember that feeling that you got? Uh, I was probably happy. Just at the moment, but it may not have been what I wanted, <laughs> so I wanted to, <laughs> so I wanted to continue to work. But uh, I don't really remember. No, I was just probably excited, happy for myself, a little bit. But that's a good mentality to have in terms of uh, being able to stay on the program and that you had set for yourself mm -hmm. in terms of goals to meet. Because you just said um, it didn't. You was probably happy at the moment, but. It's probably not what you wanted because you probably set a goal for yourself. Mm -hmm. So you quickly were excited, but then you quickly humbled yourself because you knew you set a goal for yourself. So 
what are some goals that you have going into your senior year? Are you all right? Um, first of all, is to repeat the A-10 championship. That's the first goal. Um, I also want a regular season championship. So just a regular season. Just want a regular season all right. And then um, just going further in the tournament. Just going to the next level, doing bigger and better things than we did last year. I'm not going back, not, not going backwards. Just want to continue to move forward and do better things, make better strides. Now, we had talked earlier um, about you making the tournament um, and how excited you were. Now, switching emotions, when that clock hit zero and you guys were knocked out of the tournament. How did how were you feeling at that moment? And did you wake up the next day and just say, I gotta get in the gym? Or did you take some time off and just say, you know what? This was a good year. Um, there's nothing to hang our heads over. Or was it, you know, to describe describe that moment? A little bit of both. Uh I felt like after, like after his era, I was just upset because obviously the competitor to me likes to win. But just taking a step back after we had some time off, I realized like what we have done and the good things that came out of it and the, the lessons we learned uh, from moving forward. But um, I wasn't sad. No, I wasn't sad. I wasn't crying or anything after the fact. Well, I might have cried in the locker room. I'm not sure. But <clears throat> I'm gonna save that. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I just think we just learned a lot as a as a group because you had a lot of the guys come back when we had two seniors leave. So the majority of the team was still here. So I think everybody learned a, a lesson in that and then made us better moving forward. Okay. Um. Now, Jared Terrell person. Now we are we everybody seems to know Jared Terrell, the basketball player. Mm -hmm. Now <laughs> what, don't she we, that, yeah. what don't we know about Jared Terrell the person? If I was to Google Jared Terrell and you what would you be crossing your fingers about me not knowing what you like to do outside of basketball? Like are you a fan of Taylor Swift? Mm. Do, you, <laughs> do you play golf on your off time? You know, like your poetry. You know, what what do you do outside of basketball? Nothing. I'm, I'm a simple person. I just like chilling with friends. I like hanging out a lot. I do like to eat. So any good restaurants I know about, just let me know about that. I'm gonna check it out. But I'm pretty simple. I don't. I don't go out the way and do nothing extra okay okay now <laughs> which I was thinking <laughs> yeah I've got what what I'm trying to what I'm trying to see here is um, a lot of people just look at the basketball player mm -hmm. and that's all they see yeah you know like you know a lot of NBA players get a lot of slack for you know venturing off into doing other stuff so you know, some some players. Will, I don't think anymore. In terms of, no, like some players will get slack in terms of like, all right, they want to be a singer. And oh, like, I see what you're saying. Yeah, and then like, nah, fans, <laughs> fans will be, fans will say, hey, this is not <clears throat> what we showed up. We showed up, we got you on this team just to play basketball. Right. You know, so like, like nah, like we human too. Like <laughs> we like to do other things than play basketball. I'm sure, you don't do just one thing that like what your job is. You don't just do that and go home and just <laughs> sit there. You okay. like doing other things as well. Oh, um, in terms of uh, uh, people don't see you off the court. You know, so um, how is the transition? from the prep level into collegiate in terms of adjusting to the new life of a college student athlete um the workload and still having to 
be in the gym and put in work and practice. Mm -hmm. um, how tough is it? Just explain how tough it is, you know, moving forward in terms of having to transition and having to transition so 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 quickly because yeah. you probably get I'm getting, <laughs> I had about a month to get ready and then go into college. Mm -hmm. So explain the preparation that needs to be done and how much commitment you have to put in in order to be consistent. No, you just gotta be able to, you have to be able to time manage. I think that's the biggest thing. Well that was the biggest thing for me, but me going to prep school that helped a lot. So when I took that jump to college it was like, oh I'm right I was right in stride. I didn't have to like learn how to time manage or whatnot. But I think that was the biggest thing for me. And just having the right mindset. Just not getting down on yourself, not thinking about oh I'm homesick or this is too much to do, or, I'm tired, just sticking with it and just continue to do it because you have to do it like if you want to get what you got like if you want to get to where you want to get you have to do all of it so you gotta do all the work yeah you know there's no real shortcuts in this in this game um who do you who now in your life um probably has been the motivation for most or part of your life but who now whenever you get on the court you say you know, I gotta give him my all because I know this person is watching. And I know if I don't give him my all, I know I'm letting this person down. Before it was my grandmother. My grandmother was my motivation at all at all times. Um, she passed away my junior year of high school, and then ever since then I've just been playing through her. But now I have a son on the way, so mm. that has really been my real motivation now. Just knowing that. When he comes, he's watching me. I'm, I'm the role model now. Hmm. Now that's a, a, that's a big key to play for, and, um, how do you now transition into that role? Because uh, I'm pretty sure y your father gives you fatherly advice and mm -hmm. what to do next, and now. With that being your motivation, that's an extra boost. Right. So, now, are we expecting first team all eight ten because of that extra <laughs> motivation? Or, I mean, or, I can if y'all want we, to. I'm expecting, <laughs> you know, NCAA college player of the year for extra motivation. So, how do you now <laughs> transition into that? Like, because you will be looked at, or if you're not already looked at as a role model, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah, true. So, what's the pressures? of being a student athlete who's in the light, you know, because the the URI Rams have a very big following. The, their fans are dedicated, mm -hmm. thick and through. Right. So how do you, you know, uphold your image and try to stay away from temptations and stuff that could possibly hurt your collegiate career because you know that the pressure is always on you or is it natural to you it's like right is right wrong is wrong and this is who i am and i've been raised to, i've been raised I've, I've been through so many stuff that i know um right. what to do going forward i think i was raised the right way so just knowing what's right and what's wrong i just automatically know that but just knowing that i have another set of eyes watching me for every little thing i do making sure i'm doing the right thing because obviously he's going to follow I think that got, I, I got to straighten up a little more just knowing that he's watching and that I got to set the example from now on. And whatever, whatever I do, he's going to do. Okay. So what's a – what's a – everybody has a, a, a gym secret in terms of how they work out and, you know, it's their own special little – um, set up in the gym that they don't really want people to see in terms of uh, repetition uh, on what they do. So how like, you walk, like, a, like a certain workout? Or yeah, like a... when you walk into a gym Okay. you know mm -hmm. walk us through how uh, you work out on a collegiate level. I'm not a Division 1 athlete never played Division 1 sports or collegiate sports but I mean, I'd like to hear from a player's perspective who's actually going through it right now as we speak. Yeah, you just gotta 
obviously you have to have some type of motivation or and work at it. But I mean, I don't think I do anything special or unique that, that somebody else does. But I mean, I go in there, warm up, stretch. Uh, I just try to make every rep count. Like taking a rep off doesn't doesn't do any justice. <laughs> taking a rep off doesn't do any justice. So uh, I think just going hard at all times and not taking a rip off, not taking a moment off, or taking it lightly. Okay. Just trying to get better continuously. Entered into the room, now we have another, <laughs> another special guest, uh, another heralded recruit. We'll be heading over to the state of Rhode Island next year. Also, um, you can sort of say that Jarrett's, you know, passing the torch because- um, To him? <laughs> no, <sir. laughs> Jared will be on his way out, but Dana will be on his way in. Both from the city of Boston, uh, both come the same come from the same AAU program. Uh, Dana Tate is here with us. Uh, Dana, introduce yourself. Dana Tate, class of 2018, uh, recent with Allen commit, coming in next year. Go to high school at McDuffie, the McDuffie School located in Granby. Dana, could you tell us uh, real quick um, how it felt to go through the recruitment process? Um, who helped you with the recruitment process? And um, just the feeling of uh, being able to commit to a school knowing that you'll be able to play collegiate basketball at the Division one level. Well, the recruitment process, at first, you know, when you're excited about it, you know, when you're a young kid, you see college is showing interest in you. You know, you feel excited, you feel happy, you feel good about yourself. But after a while, after you get used to it, it gets hectic. You know, they call you a lot, text you a lot. You know, it can get on your nerves sometimes, but, you know, they want you to go to your school, so you got to be grateful for that. Jerry, you laughing, is that true? Yeah. <laughs> but uh, through the recruitment process, you know, Todd from Expressions, the owner, always helped me and my mom. My dad, you know, I was my coach from high school, those are the main people in my corner helping me when I made my decision. And knowing that I could play collegiate basketball on a scholarship feels great. My parents have to pay for college and getting a free education and going to the state of Rhode Island. It's fair. You know, I'm excited. A question I have for Jerry. Um, and I'm gonna swing it to you also. Um, who's the toughest opponent you've ever had to face? You know, being playing in the Nepsack and then playing on the Nike EYBL circuit, um, probably seeing a fair share of a lot of players. Um, who to you is probably the toughest player you've ever had to play against that made you say, you know what? Can't wait till I lay some up and see him again. In this, in Nepsack, I would have to say, maybe Wabisa Bidi. Last year was the toughest player we played against. And AAU was definitely Bo Bo. Definitely 7 4. Can't, there's no way to stop him from scoring. So, how did, uh, how did they motivate you in terms of when you competed against them? What, what, what was the mindset when you got off the court after competing against Well, last year, our first game was against Cushion. And after we played them, my mindset was when we played them again. It was the first thing that came out of my mouth to my coach after the game. But, you know, unfortunately, we didn't get to see them again. You know, that was, made me upset because that was our first game. We wasn't used to playing together. You know, seeing them on so well, him killing our team. I wanted to play them again. Do the same thing to them. Okay. Um, that being said, now that I got you both in the room. Um, Let's stir the pot. I'm about to stir the pot. <laughs> you know, I'm about to stir the pot. Two different eras of basketball right here, right? Uh, one of the biggest arguments, if you step in the barbershop, you step in the gym, is which era is better and why. Um, if you could sum it up, this is a question for both of you. Which era is better for you, Jerry? Which era is better for you, Dana, in terms of 
who would win if Jared took his expressions there, you team to say. <laughs> 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 it's a head. <laughs> <laughs> These young guys over here. They talking and they say they want to meet up at three o'clock at the Reggie. I have my shoes laced by two forty-five. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> I hear it. I hear it. So, no. with that being said, how competitive would that game be? We we know it's gonna be competitive. There's no quitters. I got a point. I got a point to make. Look ahead. Right. I'll let you answer. But, I got a point to make. <laughs> but I just want to hear it. Uh, it turns out. Would you guard Jared? Would that be your assignment? Nah, I'll put a, put a, someone a little bit small on him. I'll That's probably go I'll probably go take Malik. Because I'm one of the, yeah. I'm one of the big I'm one of the bigger ones on the team, so that'd probably be my my assignment. Heard that, right? I heard him, I heard him. I That's, heard him. <laughs> That's what they messed up. I heard him. He's the big man on their team, there's a problem. Cause he can't guard Leak. And if somebody smaller than him's guarding me, they can't guard me. I can guard Leak. Leak can't Ask Leak about Mitch Hercules workout and new mission early in the morning. I ask that. <laughs> we all know Malik's not a morning person. <laughs> <laughs> so what's the, you know, in terms of, um, you know, you coming in to play at URI, Jared had already explained um, how tough it is. Um, if there's one word of advice that you could give to Dana, what would that be in terms of making that transition to the collegiate level? Just work. Just always stay in the gym. Can't go wrong with staying in the gym. As long as you're trying to get better, it'll happen. Because you're going to be in the weight room. You're going to be in shape. You're going to have, obviously, the mandatory workouts that you do. But what you do outside of that is what's going to separate you and make you great or at the high, like, achieve the highest that you want to achieve. Who motivates you to play basketball that got you to this level? motivates me from a younger age it was definitely my dad and my grandfather they definitely they got me started with basketball but now that's my mother you know making sure she's straight making sure i can provide for her after college that's my motivation mm -hmm. so you set your so you set your goal uh in terms of where you want to be after after college right. now in terms of I just know that every day, you know, it's a new day. It's like, I got to keep going. I can't let one loss, you know, set me back. I got to keep my head on straight and stay focused. And yeah, I lost. Yeah, I'll be upset. But I got to keep going. I got to keep pushing. Now, I'm going I'm to continue to stir apart because your expression team made it, made it to Peace Jam. You, you. No, sir. <laughs> blueprint is here. This is a blueprint right here. They they were the first to do it. We went though. I'm getting. And we beat BABC too. Oh. And they. Low blow. Low. <laughs> they went to EYBL, mm -hmm. and to some, they were uh, the underdogs. We weren't. I'm not saying you weren't, but. On paper, on paper, when you, when you, when you look at um, the experience that you guys had as a team, what, what experience? That was our first year. No, as a team, it's not the first year that that team has come together. Right. Right. Okay. In terms of, in terms of them, you know, some of them had played 16, some of them was already. Um, at the 17s already, and then they put them together. You guys played together for about what three years? Yeah, probably together. Two, three, so, yeah. um, in terms of that, you know, preparation, you know, how is it different when you prepare for a game now at the you know prep level? How is it different for you prepping for a game 
um, at the collegiate level, and how is I, like how is the difference between the two? I want to hear your side and your side so you can see what the difference is. Well, when we prep for games, talking about knapsack games, right? Yeah. Coach just gives us a run through of who to watch, you know, same old go of our plays, stuff like that. There's not really much else that goes into it. We know what we got to do, and it's on us to go out there and do it. That's what I was saying earlier, just the preparation difference. Mm. Yeah, but see, like, we'll watch film on every single player, you know, their tendency, you know what they do, what they like to do, what they don't like to do. Um, watch their whole team, like, run their offense, just each play, break it down, dissect it, the different actions that can go off of certain plays, um, and then actually running through it on the court, like, making sure we know how to guard a ball screen, making sure we have the whole man in the lane just in case somebody does roll, help side, weak side, just all of the little things. But like like he said, like they just go over like maybe their best three players, if that, and that's pretty much it. And that's the same process you went through when you was at the prep level. Mm, no, I think Brewster, uh, even with Hampton, they like provided us with a pretty good scout report. We didn't watch as much film as we do in college, but just the overall scout report on every player, it was there. Like that, we don't watch that much film, but you know, my coach gives us a packet, right. players' names, their tendencies, what hand they are, how tall they are, their position, stuff like that. So you, you know what they like to do. We watch their plays. We watch film. We watch film about once a week, twice a week. Watch their plays. Watch, you know, how they get up and down the floor, their pace. So we can adjust. Okay, thank you. Um, now, in terms of coming up um, as a young ball player, who did you look up to um, as a basketball player um, that pushed you in terms of, oh, I want to get to his level, or I want to be uh, where he's at, or even more? It's been the same answer for the longest time. It's always going to be Kevin Durant. Mm. It's always going to be my favorite player. Yeah, he had mentioned LeBron. Okay. Um, and but who in the city of Boston motivated you, or just New England in the in the area? Motivated me. That when you looked like younger, you show up to the games um, as a little kid, and they was older, but you saw them, and then they just took their game to another level. I, mean, I didn't start playing. Ba- I didn't start playing basketball until I was about ten. And knowing these players, I didn't really know anybody like that. So by the time I was, by the time I knew who players were, I had the mindset that I want to be my own person. I didn't look up to anybody besides Kevin Durant. Okay. That's in the NBA. If anybody at the high school level or college level, I didn't really look up to. Okay. So what pushes you in the morning? Like how do you, what's your, what's your workout regime um, at this level? Because now you you're committed, but there's there's still no no days off. Right. So better not be. <laughs> <laughs> so how do you uh, prepare yourself going into this uh, senior season over at um, <clears throat> um, as one of the leaders on the team um, and, and the focal point? Um, how how much are you preparing yourself for this last year? And knowing that you know the work doesn't stop here. And it gets even harder knowing that people see that you're committed to go play at the A-10 level. And they're like, well, you know what? If he's committed to play at the A-10 level, well, I'm going to go at him to show that I'm at that level too. Well, I still wake up at, you know, 9, 30, 10 every morning. I'm not an early boy, early bird. that gets up at 5 and work. I go work out in the gym at about 11 every day, leave at 1, whether it's all the way in Boston. Or I'll go down to the Brockton Y before everybody gets there. No one really comes in until about 12.30 around there. So I'll either go there, work out in the morning before I get my day started. Okay. What's the biggest part of your game right now that you're working on, that you're, you know, um, that you're working on to get better? Or what are you adding to your repertoire now? Definitely my uh, my handle. Got the collegiate level. I'm going to have to transform into a wing. Because right now I play the combo forward, which is a three and a four. But, you know, I'm going to have to get used to be on the wing more. So definitely working on my handle, my shooting ability. And I'm trying to get laterally quicker 
so I can play defense better at that level because that's a big part of the game sure. at that level. Jared, what about for you going into your senior season? Um, what's the, what's the part of your game that you're working on more that you uh, um, increasing the levels on, and what are you adding to your repertoire now? Um, just getting better overall. I mean, obviously my shot could use some work. Uh, putting some range on my shot, ball handling, making better decisions, uh, like pick and roll situations, and just um, passing ability. I think. That's a big thing. And just being the defensive player that I am, just being aggressive, trying to make plays on both ends. Okay. <clears throat> um, what's a knock that people have said about you and then you've told yourself, um, I'm going to change their mentality about that? You know how some people look at a ball playing back, mm -hmm. well, all you can do is dunk. Yeah. So what is something that they have said about you um, that you have said, well, you know what, that's not me, and then you... He, can't, he can't shoot. Definitely, he can't shoot. People say, back up, you can't shoot. I start shooting it. Now, now my confidence is built up so I can shoot it. Now they got to guard you. Right. How about you, Jack? Uh, they said everything about me. <laughs> I can't shoot, can't dribble. It's too small to be a, a two guard in, in college. Uh, I think I changed everybody's mind about that. Okay. So far. All right, we're about to get up out of here. Um, Sign out um, any way you want to sign out. I'd like to thank Jared Terrell and Dana Tay for um, jumping on the Who Dreams Magazine Bridging the Gap podcast. I appreciate you for having me. Hey, thank you. Appreciate you for having me. Uh, thank you, fellas.